Super Robot Wars, baby. Oh man, Super Robot Wars T released on the Nintendo Switch earlier this year, and it's been one of my favorite games on the Switch so far, especially this year. A spectacle of a game that mixed many awesome things into one of the coolest strategy RPGs around. That was a brand new game, but after its success, Bandai wanted to bring some of the older titles to the system too, and so early next year we'll be getting Super Robot Wars X, but right here, right now, we have the release of Super Robot Wars V. Before we get into this review, just the usual heads up that if you're not subscribed already, don't forget to do so. Not only will you get our awesome content, but you can also be in with the chance of winning a Nintendo Switch Lite and Zelda Link's Awakening, which we will be giving away once we hit 50,000 subscribers. We've seen a massive influx of new subscribers this week, so welcome, enjoy our awesome content. It's important to point out that this is an import review, something we love to do here. It's only available in Japan and other Asian regions and so is not easily gotten hold of in the West. There's no announced Western release and there probably never will be due to massive licensing hurdles with all the different anime and music in here. So it's likely that you will have to import which I'll talk about what your options are a bit later. So yeah, if you're gonna ask where on earth can you buy this, stick with us. Let's start with the story. Now, it's a crossover game which always presents a few issues in trying to mold a focused narrative. The basic premise of this entry is that in 2199, Earth is a wasteland wrecked by an invading alien race with seemingly unlimited power. The last surviving Earthlings live underground. The cities abandoned, the oceans dried up, humanity is on its last legs. The only hope for them is in a distant part of the galaxy hundreds of thousands of light years away, they know of an alien race who can help them recover their dying planet. The legendary ship Yamato and its crew, plus your main character, either a boy or a girl, head out on a voyage into the unknown to get help. The V in the name stands for Voyage. Pursued by the menacing aliens, as well as being sidetracked by all sorts of time warping, dimension jumping, sci-fi goodness, the story plays a big part of the game. There's just as much talking as there is plain, be warned, but you can skip the text if you want to. The story begins very strongly with a surprisingly focused opening uh, with a fairly small core cast of characters, but about five or six hours into it, that's where it goes off the wall and you get characters up the wazoo. It's slightly exhausting and not quite as captivating as what I enjoyed in T, the later game, but it's still commendable. If you're into these characters and the anime, then you'll probably really enjoy this crossover. So, Super Robot Wars V was originally released on the PlayStation 4 and Vita in 2017, so it's a predecessor to the last game, hence it shares very similar aspects to T that I reviewed about 6 months ago. There's definitely going to be a sense of deja vu here if you've already played that one. It's a turn-based strategy game, very similar to the Fire Emblem style of the genre. Yes, I'm aware comparing it to the Nintendo series is kind of disrespectful due to this series' longevity, but for a casual audience, I think it's an adequate comparison to get you on board with what it's all about. It's grid-based, it's the kind where you move all your units to where you want and attack, and then the enemy does all of their stuff afterwards. There's no speed start which dictates which unit moves next. That's not a positive or a negative for me personally, it's just what it is. Once you initiate an attack, your unit will strike first and then the enemy will do a counter attack. So there's a risk versus reward here where you can't use a weakened unit to attack first and then follow up with a teammate to finish them off, since there's a good chance that your weakened unit may not survive the counter attack. That's about as tactical as it gets. The strategy is not exactly the deepest most of the time, it's just a war of attrition rather than using your cunning to overcome the enemies. Indeed, just like the sequel, it, they're fairly easy games and I think you'll definitely want to notch up the difficulty to the highest in order to get some semblance of a challenge, but it's still not much. You'll spend most of the game without losing a single unit unless you're very careless. It's more about the show than the challenge. There are lots of stats on show. Before you initiate an attack, you'll see that each unit has various attacks that offer different damage outputs, energy points, range, accuracy, as well as a whole host of different variables that make Super Robot Wars seem more complicated than it actually is. It kind of looks overwhelming, but really, you just pick an attack that suits you and you're golden. Forget all the terminology, forget all the numbers, it's really not that complicated. I think it's actually a perfect game for beginners to the genre. 
What follows is just an amazing spectacle. The resulting animation of each attack is just so wonderful to watch. It's completely hands-off, so you're basically pressing a play button, just like any other turn-based strategy game, but it just has so much more feeling behind it. I mean, Fire Emblem is great and all that, but it just doesn't have the buzz that Super Robot Wars gives you. Every time a new unit joins your team, you can't wait to check out their handful of attacks to see what awesomeness they will unleash. And they seem to get better and better as the game goes along. The attacks are fairly tame for the first few hours, but when more series join the fray, you'll be witnessing stuff that will make mech fans squeal. And this is coming from someone who's not really into anime, especially of the mech variety. If mechs are in video games, I always tend to think of them as the least interesting part. But Bandai have just pulled together something that can bring tears to even the most apathetic of gamer. It's beautiful. There are more RPG elements under the hood. Between battles, you can upgrade your mechs and ships with points that you earn from the fights. There's even separate tactical points which you can use to research gear, to equip and improve your special abilities. This is quite overwhelming if you've never played them before, but they need to be done. I know it said it's not a difficult game, but you may find yourself in a pickle if you don't upgrade your mechs just a little over time. In terms of content, it's packed. In just the story mode alone, there's almost 50 chapters with a battle and reams of story to go through. Each battle can last between 20 minutes or an hour, depending if you watch all the attacks or if you're a heathen and skip through them. On this Asian cartridge that I own, there are 20 DLC missions already included and downloaded. I'm not sure about the Japanese version, I'm afraid. There are secondary objectives for each mission too, which are much harder to achieve, and I believe can offer split paths or different story branches, but don't quote me on that. But anyways, it's a big game, don't worry about that, it will last you a long, long time. The audio here is amazing, which can be expected considering they've brought in tracks from the respective anime series that characters have been pulled from. Honestly, it's not quite as epic as T in terms of awesome tracks that play when units attack, perhaps due to the units given at the start, but once more series join your ranks, you get a healthier selection of musical tracks to liven the stages up. Honestly, saxophones are cheesy in every single context, except in anime with robots. And then it's awesome. I can't get enough of it. There's only a brief amount of voice acting here. During attack exchanges, there's plenty, but during the story sections, it's sparse. So much so that when it does randomly pop up, it feels weird. I wish it could have been fully voice acted, but there's so much dialogue here that it would have been ridiculously expensive, so I do understand why it's not. Visually, the game is at its finest. I've already spoken about the battle animations, and I can't find enough superlatives for them. They are what totally makes this game, and you can call me shallow if you want. Yeah, the gameplay is fine, but the battle animations take it to legendary levels. It looks just like an anime. The awesome, stylish attacks are easily the best out there when looking at strategy games. I can't think of anything that comes close to matching the visuals that they've achieved here. And I'm sure the budget for this is not the highest either, so what they've done is wonderful. I guess I do have to say that the animations in this one, V, uh, slightly less polished than the sequel that I already reviewed, T, but it's harsh to see that as a negative. Sure, T has a bit more pizzazz and the explosions look a little nicer, and they seem to have dropped the occasional 3D models found here, but if you're going into this one as your first, you'll be blown away. It's a shame that the really awesome looking attacks are a bit slower to get into in this one. Your starting units have your standard machine gun stuff, which looks awesome, but it doesn't immediately kick you in the balls like the sequel does. Anyways, outside of the battle animations, everything else is fairly simplistic. The character art looks nice, but emotions are sparse. A natural tactical battlefield where you move your units around is pretty simplistic. I do love the environment variety here though. Uh, you're always moving from one exotic location to another. One battle, you're orbiting a flaring sun. The next, you'll be on Pluto or underwater or in a cityscape. I like the constant switches, and this is something that this one does better than T, its sequel, which kind of lingers in a few slightly boring environments for too long. Okay, so what you all want to know is, is it import friendly? Well, as you can see, yes, it is. In fact, this version is slightly more friendly than T due to the Japanese eShop version also having English this time around. Uh, Robot Wars T wasn't so lucky. 
uh, on the Japanese eShop, Super Robot Wars V is priced at 8,360 yen, which in Western money is around 63 pounds in the UK, almost 78 dollars in the US, and about 71 euros. That ain't cheap. And to hammer the message home at how expensive it is, there's a deluxe version, which is 12,730 yen, which is 96 pounds, 118 dollars, and 108 euros. I'm not entirely sure what that includes outside of some music tracks, but I do know that you do not want the deluxe version. Do not buy that one. Why? Well, because that version does not have English according to the Japanese eShop. If you take a look at the two listings for the standard version and deluxe, scroll down a bit and you can see the language options and see that there is a bit of a difference. The standard version has Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and most importantly for you guys, English. These two characters here mean English. It's very useful to know that for future Japanese eShop adventures. But anyways, compare that to the deluxe version and you'll see that there is only one language and that is Japanese. Why? Well, that just tells me that whatever is included as a bonus was never initially localized back in 2017 when it initially released. Uh, that's what I'm guessing anyways. So yeah, please follow that advice if you're gunning for the download version. And if you are and need some Japanese eShop credit, and let's face it, you're gonna need a lot, then we'll pop an affiliate link down below as to where you can purchase some. But if you're a collector like me, then you may want to import the physical version. As you may be able to tell, I have the Chinese version. Uh, I actually think it's technically from Taiwan, but that's the whole political topic I don't want to get into right now. This is about space robots. Uh, so yeah, the Asian version, Chinese version, 100% have English on the cartridge. The Japanese version, I'm not entirely sure, but considering the standard on the Japanese eShop says it does, then I'm inclined to believe that it does, but I'm not confident. So just get the Asian version, guys, just to be sure. If you want the Asian version, some of which I believe have an English cover, then I'll pop the links below as to where you can find them. If you use our links, then we will receive a small cut from each purchase, but it actually supports us massively. In fact, it's probably the best way to support us, but only do it if you're gonna buy it anyways. No pressure. Overall, Super Robot Wars V is an absolute treat. It's not quite as good as the sequel, T, uh, that was released six months ago due to a slower start as well as a slightly lower spectacle in the animation, but it's minor. If you've played T and you're gagging for more of the same, then this is the perfect addition to your collection. If you think that you had your fill with that release and don't need any more, then perhaps this one will be a bit too similar. In fact, they're pretty much the same. Uh, for me, I loved playing more of this glorious mech action. I mean, who doesn't enjoy seeing a robot blasting a shotgun into the face of a dragon? Great visuals, great music, bucket loads of content, it's a dream come true for anime fans. I think this one is one of the must-have imports for the Nintendo Switch. Get T first, but if you're after second servings, this is great. An 8.5 out of 10. Of course, now head over to watch my review of the sequel T, perhaps watch my playlist of other tasty import reviews, although I apologize for how much money you may end up spending. I'll see you guys over there, take care.